This is problem number 21 from the August 2015 Algebra Regents exam. This one's actually quite involved. There's a lot to do to figure out which one of the following statements is true. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first one. It says over the interval of x being between negative 1 and 1, the average rate of change for n of x is less than that for g of x. Okay, so to figure that out, we're going to have to find the rate of change. And we can find the rate of change by finding the change in y over the change in x. Okay, let's start with n of x. Um, we can see that n of x, when, well, I guess we're going to be looking at these two here, between negative 1 and 1. Um, so the change in y is going to be the difference between 9 and 5. So 9 minus 5, and the change in x would be 1 minus negative 1. And that gets us 4 over 2, which is 2. Now, to figure out the rate of change for g of x, we first need to calculate what g of x is um, when x is negative 1 and 1. Okay, so g of negative 1 will be uh, negative 1 squared minus negative 1 plus 6. Um, and that gets 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 6 is 8. And then now to find g of 1, we'll do negative 1 squared, this time without the brackets, uh, minus 1 plus 6. Uh, this will become negative 1, minus 1 is negative 2, negative 2 plus 6 is 4. Okay, so now to find the rate of change, we're going to take 4, subtract 8, do that over here. And then uh, the change in x is the same. It's still 1 minus negative 1. And 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. Okay, so now if we're comparing, this is the rate of change for n of x, 2, versus the rate of change for g of x, negative 2. Uh, this says the average rate of change, 2, is less than negative 2. And that is false. So that is not correct. Okay, moving on to the next one. The y-intercept of g of x is greater than the y-intercept for n of x. This one's a bit faster. We know that to find the y-intercept, that's when x is equal to 0. So for n of x, the y-intercept would be 8. And to find the y-intercept of g of x, we'll need to find g of 0 and that is 0, or negative 0 squared, minus, or not plus, minus 0 plus 6, which is 6. So the y-intercept of g of x is 6, and it's saying that 6 is greater than 8, and that is also false. Okay, moving on to the third option. It says the function g of x has a greater maximum value than n of x. And we can see the max value of n of x by taking a look at these numbers along here, and we can see that 9 is the greatest for n of x. Now to find the maximum of g of x, that means we're going to be looking for the x value of the vertex. And you may remember, in order, uh, a good trick to doing that when it's written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, is that the x value of the vertex is uh, this formula negative b over 2a. Okay. Now, b up here is negative 1, so it's going to be negative of negative 1 over 2 times a, and up here we have an a value of negative 1. This becomes 1 over negative 2, or negative 1 half. Um, now, to actually find the maximum, we need to actually know the x, or sorry, the y value, the output. So we need to find g of negative one-half. So g of negative one-half means we're going to be doing negative negative one-half squared minus negative one-half plus six. And after doing all that work, you should get uh, 6.5 or six and a half. And therefore, you can see that the maximum value of g of x is 6.5. They're saying that it's greater than 9, which is false. 
So by process of elimination, we can see that option number 4 must be correct, but we can double check. It says that the sum of the roots of n of x equals 0 is greater than the sum of the roots of g of x equals 0. Now to find the roots of n of x, we just need to look up here and see where um, n of x is equal to 0, and that's when x is negative 2 and 4. So and this to sum them, we're going to add them 2 plus negative, oh sorry, negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2. Now to find the roots of g of x, we need to factor, and I'm going to first factor out a negative, so we get left with negative, and then x squared plus x minus 6. Just be tight. By taking that negative out, it makes it much easier to factor. Okay. So now we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 6 but add to 1. That means one will be positive 3 and the other is negative 2. And that means our x-intercepts are negative 3 and positive 2. The sum of those, negative 3 plus 2, is negative 1. So when we're comparing 2 versus negative 1, the sum, or sorry, 2 is greater than negative 1. So this is the correct option. Okay, that was a pretty involved question. Um, hopefully that helps. Thanks very much for visiting JD's Regions Preparation.